الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم دين ما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters, I wanted to share a benefit with you all A reminder that inshallah ta'ala I hope from it That it will benefit me, the speaker And it will benefit each and every one of you who is listening inshallah ta'ala And that is And you know the reminder, it benefits the believer Allah says, فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind, or verily the reminder benefits the believer I remember a year or so uh, a noble brother, very beloved to me and many other brothers, a brother by the name of Ahmed, which probably a lot of you are aware of. Today I ended up coming to the hospital uh, in which he was in Rahimahullah Rahmatan Wasi'ah. May Allah bestow his never ending mercy onto him. Uh, the hospital which he was in. And I remember, subhanAllah, where I'm sitting from, I can see a chair where he was sitting on that day when we prayed the Salat al Isha. And um, as I was coming in, me and Brother Imran, who were here, we had spoken about him as soon as we came in. But what it reminded me of, of is two things. The first thing is how, subhanAllah, we're very heedless and we forget Allah. It was here not long ago when Allah wa ta'ala reminded us death by taking our brother away from us. Because the reminder for the death of the brother is not for him, it's for those who are after him. Allah is telling them, you're just going to die like that. Prepare for it. And the believer, my beloved brothers and sisters, everything is a lesson for him. Everything around him which he sees, he takes it as a lesson and he benefits from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, كل نفس دائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم Allah tells us in this verse that every single person is going to taste death. Death is something that's for everybody. But then Allah tells us that He's going to take us all with actions and righteous deeds that we have done. It doesn't matter the size of that deed that you've done. Allah says, If what you did was very little and small, you'll still see that the day of judgment. Whether it be good or bad, you're going to see it. So don't belittle a righteous actions. So the thing that came to my mind, the first point was how heedless we are and how we forget that our time can be any minute. When Allah spoke about the hour, and the hour for every one of us brothers is when he dies. The scholars, or as is narrated from the Prophet, Man Anyone who dies, his hour has started. When Allah spoke about the hour, when he spoke about death, when he spoke, he spoke about it as though it's close. He says, The hour has come close and the people are heedless. Allah says, uh, Allah also says Allah also says Allah also says uh, Many verses in the Quran You open the Quran you'll see it Allah always says it is close Very close that every single one of us His hour is going to come If it's that close The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, They said to him why don't you smile Why don't you enjoy yourself And he said كَيْفَ أَضْحَكُوا how am I going to smile? How am I going to laugh? How am I going to enjoy myself? When the angel who has been given the trumpet has placed it on his mouth, all he waits is for Allah to tell him to blow into it. <coughs> so for each and every one of us, there's no, there's no reason for us to believe that, that that person couldn't have been us. Here we are again, a year or so late, uh, later, we're in the same place again. The question is, I ask myself from that period of time, what good have I accumulated? What good have I personally done? And when I, when I ask myself that question, it makes me really scared. It really worries me. Have I really... I haven't taken a lot of lesson from it. I have not taken as much as I was needed from me. I haven't stayed away from what Allah told me to stay away from. I haven't come with the goods that Allah wa ta'ala wanted from me. And so my beloved brothers and sisters, we need to prepare. What the wise one is the one who takes, who takes his zad, who takes his provision with him. Before he travels, he prepares everything which he needs places it in his bag and once he takes the journey he's got everything he needs whilst he's in his journey the wise one is that one my beloved brothers and sisters we've got a journey ahead of us we've got a, another place that we're going to what is a word for in the zadi taqwa prepare the best provision in brothers piety to be conscious of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're going to stand in front of your lord allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
He's going to ask you questions. He's going to ask you questions that you already know the question and you already know the answer to it. And you can only pass it by making sure you have those answers for those questions. Wallahi, it is not rocket science. Brothers, it worries me more than it worries all of you. I am more worried. I am more concerned. I came to visit a person who was ill in the hospital, just looking at the sheets, the white sheets. It reminded me of the shrouds, of the graves when everybody's going to be shrouded with that shroud. That's what's going to be your shroud. If we were to know what was waiting for us on the other side, as the Prophet told us, if you knew what I knew, you would laugh little, and you would cry a lot. If only we knew what waits us, death, resurrection, accountability, <coughs> then a lot of us will spend the rest of their life depressed and sad and worried. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes us people who wake up, who realize what's ahead of them, what they need to be preparing for, what is it that they need, righteous actions. The Prophet said, Yattabi'u to thalatha. Three is going to go to you in your, uh, go with you, but two are going to come back. Two are going to come back and one is going to stay with you in your grave. The one thing that's going to stay with you in your grave, my beloved brothers and sisters, is your actions. It's your actions. And it is your actions, brothers, that a person will enter Jannah. Enter Jannah because of the good that you have done. It's that action that we need to befriend. It is that action that we need to come with. If we're not, if we lose and we don't make it through to Jannah, and we end up going to the hellfire, we have no one to blame. Even shaytan will tell us, tell us that. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي فَلَا تَلُومُونِي Don't blame me. وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Blame yourselves. مَا أَنَا بِمُسْرِخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُسْرِخِينَ إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا شَرَكْتُمُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِ إِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ Don't blame me. Shaytan is saying this to you. Don't blame me. Don't put the fault on me. It's all your fault. Don't blame other people for your own sins, for your own shortcomings. For the own problems that you're going through don't pick, take that finger and place it and point it at other people the reason why you're falling short in your religion the reason why you're falling short in your deed is because of yourself no one else and the minute you recognize that the minute you get up and the minute you start working towards that that's when you're truly going to get righteous actions my beloved brothers and sisters it's a'mal it is actions the salaf salih the pious predecessors they realized that they knew that and that's why they spent the rest of their lives crying they spent the rest of their lives weeping. They spent the rest of their life know, knowing what to expect on the other side. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah said, if I spent put one leg in Jannah and the other leg was still out, I'll still be worried. I'll still be scared. I've got one leg in Jannah. The other leg hasn't yet gone in. I'm still worried and I'm still concerned. So he's already half in Jannah and he's worried and he's concerned and he wants to get through to it. You haven't got no leg in there. You don't know what you're going to end up. Umar radiallahu anhu was promised Jannah alive. Abu Bakr was promised Jannah alive. Uthman was promised Jannah alive. Ali ibn Abi Talib was promised Jannah alive. Each and every one of them were promised Jannah alive. But that didn't stop them from working hard. Oh Allah, wherever our youth are in the world, whether, whether it be America, whether it be Canada, whether it be Britain, UK, Europe, Africa, Asia, Middle East, it doesn't matter. Oh Allah, wake us all up. Okay. Muslims, whether it be old elders and it be youngsters, oh Allah, wake us up. Make us realize what was needed from us and make us those who come with beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. Oh Allah, forgive us for our sins, our private sins, our public sins, that which we know no one else knows of us, and that which you, that everyone else knows of us. Oh Allah, forgive us for everything, and also forgive us for the sins we don't know that we have done. Oh Allah, you're the one who's able to do that. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.